we're going to do a few different exercises um, designed to share with you maybe some things you might want to do to break up your lecture. Um, and so one of the things, uh, I'm not going to go over an exercise first. On page, I think it's five or six in your guide, there should be a something called discussion questions. Right? It's uh, page five. Just take a moment to read that for a second, and I'll explain why it's why it works. Uh, it is uh, pretty effective for a variety of reasons. So I got this from uh, a professor of mine at Clemson, Dr. Maker. I had it for four classes, four different classes. Um, and each one, he had the same participation grade. And it was worth 10% of our grade. And that's, this is the way it worked. You, you came in, and if we were going over material, let's say we were going over something um, you know, by Aristotle, Socrates or whatever we were studying in terms of philosophy, that particular day we had a reading to do. We could put a question up on the board before class started. And we put our initials next to our question. We had to have so many questions by the end of the semester in order to earn the perfect score. If we had less than that, then we would get, you know, of course, the same thing as up here. For me, in a full semester class or my intro to lit class, they have to put up eight questions. They get exactly what you're reading. We go over it the first day. This is one of the little things that Alana was talking about before, going over the procedures of class, right? Here are the expectations. And so this is what we do. If I've got a student who talks a lot in class, has a lot of ideas, and puts up no questions up on the board, it's out of my hands. That's a zero for participation. It also encourages reading to occur. If you, you know, a lot of our students don't want to read before class. This encourages that. Does it mean that they're reading the entire chapter? Not necessarily. For me, with a short story, they're likely going to read it because they, you know, in order for them to put up a question on the board, they've got to read it. Sometimes they don't. But um, this is what it looks like. So what it looks like in practice being that we don't have a board. I just use the Word file to show you what that might look like. So there's a story called A and P. Okay? And that's something that once in a while, I will assign. And here are some common questions. So the students come in. My class starts at 9.30. They get there before 9.30. and give them a little, maybe a minute or two. But after that, that's it. I'll announce, no more questions. If, you know, someone might walk in. I'm like, no more questions now, we're done. And so here are the four that I have for this class meeting. Why does Sammy quit? Ward put that up here. Is there something symbolic about the herring snacks the girls buy? Vanessa put that up here. Why does Sammy think his life is forever changed after he quits? DL, David, what's the significance of historical and geographical setting is Brandon. So they came in class, they put them up on the board. I start, I check off, they got it. I use these questions to then toss back to the students, put them in small groups, they discuss, and we go over the, the story. So if James comes in, and he, he comes in after Brandy, and he puts the same question up there, because I, I usually have a board of like 15 questions. And I'll come to once in a while, get you know, the same question, I'll say, who put it up here first? Who was here first? I've never had a fight break out. You know, they're usually pretty honest. I'm like, James, and just make sure you look at what questions are up here. Next time you get another chance to put the question, okay? And, and they can't come in the last day we're going over stuff and put up eight questions. It's not the way it works. It also encourages them to get, through, get there on time. Because they know that there are points that are associated with it. 
So I, I just thought that you'd want to know something about something like that. It's pretty easy. You know, you can always modify it if you would rather also, <coughs> let's say you want a participation grade to be worth 10%, maybe five could be the questions and five could be your subject, what really is a subjective opinion. I'm personally, I'm, I, I think it needs to be more objective. All right, any questions about that? Yes? Do you have any creative ideas if we are unable to give any kind of grades for it? You're, oh, meaning you're not able to give any grades for it? Well, I mean, you could, maybe some extra credit for tests. I mean, no, do what do you teach? Oh. Yes. <laughs> um, maybe it could be, you know, I, I don't know what your rules and regulations are for that. I was going to say a uh, uh, missed homework for a number of questions. Yeah, I mean, you're, it's nursing. <laughs> You're very special. <laughs> um, can't give extra credit. Get rid of a tardy. Give him an extra absence. I don't know if that's the thing. Maybe one day they can wear flip flops at clinical. <laughs> That won't go, will it? Now I'll just start being a wise guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it's tough. Yeah, no, none of you have a flip flop. All right, any other questions? Sorry about that. Is that in your syllabus? It is in my syllabus. In my instruction, we, we call them instructional packages in my college. And then we have the instructor's information sheet, which is like, that's the specific, here are my guidelines, my grades, it's right in there. And that's only my intro to lit class and my communications class. I don't do this in my one-on-one. -on -one. Um, all right, so let's do something that I think is, uh, should be of worth to you. So on page six, you have this, interview questions. We're going to go this in just a second. I would like you to be in groups of three, but don't do anything yet. So three here, three here, three here, right? Three, three, and then three. Three, but now you're gonna be with, with these two guys. One, two, purple, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Goatee, okay? Yep, you're goatee, you're gonna do these ladies. You're right here with these two ladies. One, two, three. 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 Even though you're not instructors, I need you. Is that all right? Would you be able to participate in this one? Okay. You're going to be with this gentleman right here. Okay? Okay, you're all in your groups of three. <laughs> all right, so you three are in your, you're in your groups. One of you will have the answer key. So one of you will, instead of having name of student one, I'm gonna use these three up here as the example. Charles will be number one. Is it Vanessa? But it's spelled differently. Vanessa? Vanessa. I do pronounce the name, Vanessa and Ward. So one of you will have a sheet, right? The rest of you don't need it. One of you will have the sheet with the three names on it, okay? So do that now. Decide who's gonna have the answer key. Okay. So, in each group, there's just one answer key that's being used. I just went around at least one side of the room. So it's not like there's multiple answer keys. So if you are, you should, there should be two people that do, don't have an answer key. Just Fold your, put your paper away. Don't want to write down anything on it. 
You know, this is one answer key with a name. At this point, it should not say name of student one. It should be a name. So Kayla, Daryl, and Ellie, right? Or, oh, you, what? Oh, you're this way, sorry. Now I'm confusing everybody. All right, so this is the way it works. And by the way, like right now, this is the first time that you're doing this, so it's gonna be you know, somewhat difficult, right? But if you start doing this, in at least like every class or every other class meeting with your students. They get used to it and it's like, okay, we're gonna do number heads together. You know, take out a sheet of paper, and get in your groups, take out a sheet of paper, one sheet of paper and you do this and um, you go from here. So the way it works is you've got your names, you've got your numbers. You the instructor, this time it's me. You're gonna ask a question about something you need to go over that day, right? So if you're teaching nursing, it could be uh, give me a topic you teach. COPD. What? COPD and, and how to provide care for that patient. Right? So COPD. Um, and you're going to ask a series of questions. Let's say just three questions. So you ask a question. Then you then give the students time to talk to one another in their groups. right? But just in their groups. You give them about three minutes. And then at the end of that three minutes, you then will get their attention by clapping or turning the lights off or doing something to get their attention. Get them to stop talking, and you're going to ask the question. Or not, uh, sorry, then you're going to call out a number. At that point, whatever number you call out, that student whose name is next to that number takes the answer key and writes down the answer. The other two remain silent and don't write down anything. Give them about a minute and a half to two minutes to write down the answer. You get their attention. You move on to the next one. So let's go over this together before we start. What happens first? What do I do? I ask a question. What do you then do in your groups? Good. Does anybody write anything down? No. You're just talking about what you think the answer is. What happens after you're done talking? <laughs> right. I then get your attention and call out a number. There's no writing until I call out that number. The answer key then moves to whosoever number I call, and then what happens? That person writes down the answer what the teammates do? Nothing. Then what happens? I get their attention and move on to the next one. Okay, great. So for this one here, um, obviously, we don't all teach nursing, we don't all teach aircraft maintenance, we don't all teach auto, what have you. However, we all have the ability to answer a question on interview skills because we all have gone through interviews. We're all professionals. That's what we're going to do. So I'll start out with the first question. You have decided to apply to teach at a different community college. It could be Mississippi, it could be Kansas, it could be South Carolina. But you, know, you kind of want to move on, check out somewhere different. And um, you, you get a call for the interview. You go in, you do your teaching demonstration, and then you sit down with a committee of people, and they're asking you questions about your industry experience, your teaching experience, and you're there for an hour, and you're sweating it out. And then they're, they're done. And then they say to you, do you have any questions for the committee? What I want you to discuss with your group, come up with an answer is, what is one question that you should not ask and why should you not ask it? Go. Okay, time's up. Time's up. We're gonna do, ready? Number three. Three. Now, all the number threes, take the answer key. Don't forget your question you have to answer is, what should you not ask and why? Go. Everybody remains quiet. Okay, so you're answering the question on the answer key, number one. Give you guys another 30, maybe 15 seconds, and then we'll move on. Okay, time's up, pens down. We'll do one more question and then we'll go over the process. Second question, 
<laughs> Same interview. You're asked the, the tough question, can you tell me about your weakness? What I want you to discuss with your partners is what is the general strategy that you should use to answer that question? I don't want to know your specific weaknesses. I want you to talk about what you think is a productive and effective strategy to answer that question in general. In other words, how do you answer that question? Go. Okay. Time's up. Time's up. Now I can go to number three again. I can do that. But I won't. Let's go number two. Go. Answer key goes to number two. Number two is now writing the answer down. The question again is, what is the general effective strategy to answer the question about what your weakness is? What's the best way to answer the interview question, what is your weakness? Okay, time's up. That's fine. You know, this is this is all well and good. Product, I know you're having fun, but hopefully the product. Right? Talking about interviews, we can all talk about interviews. Um, I want to talk about process first. Let's talk about process. So process-wise, what happened in terms of the learning and the teaching going on? What happened? Say it loud. Engagement. Brainstorming, <coughs> collaborating, what sharing, what's my role? Did anybody notice what I was doing? Facilitating. Facilitating. Coming around to groups, now this is a large group. None of you will have 80 students in the class. If you do, come see me after, let's talk. Um, so, you know, you're gonna have classes that are 40, maybe 50. This might not work for you, but you still can try. Classes are 30 below. Pretty, pretty good, pretty effective. You can get around and you can really sit down and facilitate. I often use this. My students think they're being graded. Most of the time, I'm not grading it. I just collect these things at the end of class, and I keep them. But I'm using it to sit down with groups at different times and just talk and teach. And then we go over the answers as a full class. It's teaching. It's just not a quiz for me. Um, I'm facilitating. Checking in on the answers up here. I sit up the first row with that first question about what question you shouldn't ask. I got to a group back here that said, we know you shouldn't ask this question, but we don't know why. The second question, I stayed with this group right here because they had a, a really good answers, but a little bit different, and I wanted to go into, okay, what do you think? Why do you come up with that answer? It's facilitation. So in terms of that first answer, you know, the groups that I heard all were saying pay. You don't ask about pay. Now, this group right here, all three of them said you don't ask it, but they're like, I just don't know why. I don't like it. They disagree with it. Anybody else feel that way? They, did, they disagree with that? You should, you should be able to ask about pay? Right. It's, but you shouldn't. Right. Oh, raises, right, 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 yeah. And here's the thing, like, and I do the same questions with my communications class. I'm gonna start teaching on this class August 26th. So I think, yeah, I think they're Monday, Wednesday, next time. And, and by September, second, third week of September, we'll be doing the same activity, and I'll be going over this with students who are, you know, 18, 19 years old. Some of them will be in their 40s, but most of them will be Generation Z. They've never really gone over interview skills before. They've not gone for a formal interview. So I have to talk about this and get them to kind of see that. 
most of them will not come up with pay. And so that's the way I teach that, and we talk about it. Yeah, it's in the textbook, because you said you teach the career development course, and it's in the textbook. Don't ask about pay, so we got to go into reasons why. The second one about weaknesses, yes? The reason why? Yeah. Did, who, did they come up with a reason why? Yeah, what was your reason? Each group came up with a reason why. I hope that was the question. What did you come up with? Why should you not ask about pay? Comes up during a contract offer. It come, and also a lot of people say it makes you seem money hungry. And the answer I tell students is, you haven't been offered the job yet. When you're offered the job, that's when you negotiate. If you've already spent the time creating a cover letter, creating a resume, sending it in, getting ready, prepping for the interview, driving to the interview, and then interviewing, what's the point of asking about pay at that point? You've already spent all that time and energy. Just wait till you get to the negotiation period. You know? That's really what it comes down to. In addition, I asked you guys a question about specifically applying to teach at another community college. Information's already out there. You can go look at the state plan <coughs> for that particular instructor position. I mean, so I wanted my students to be aware federal and state jobs are always, the salaries are published, there's a band, and you can find it out. If you don't want, if you look at that, the day that that job uh, uh, opening comes out, and you decide that's not gonna be enough money, then don't waste your time. You, know? you can also do research with salary.com, the private sector, in any case, the other one was, um, you know, how to answer the question of uh, what is your weakness. What's great is that these guys back here have good answers. We had um, Haley. I, I came over and I heard her say, identify a weakness and how you're going to overcome it, what you're doing to overcome it. And then Stephen here talked about identifying a weakness and then establishing that you have some strengths that will overshadow that weakness. And that's pretty cool, too. What I want my students to know is I definitely identify a weakness. Because oftentimes I'll hear students say, turn a weakness into a, which eh. can be seen through. Like, you ever see, anybody watch The Office religiously? Like they've oh, seen yeah. almost every episode. Yeah. Do you remember when, when, when Michael goes to a job at <laughs> corporate and um, what's the guy's, Wallace asks him, can you tell me your strengths? And Michael's like, let me tell you about my weaknesses. And then their strengths. You know, people can see through that. You gotta be really careful. What I want my students to know is identify a weakness and what you're going to overcome. It. And, um, and then we talked about that. When, so Steven said in his interview, his weakness was, I haven't had any teaching experience. But he's got this amazing experience working with, you know, a, a top hospitals where he, he used to live and the networking that he can do. That's, that's pretty good. What we could also do is say, well, in order to become a better teacher, I plan to observe you know, veteran teachers at the college. Uh, I would like to be assigned a mentor, you know, that sort of thing. And that would help too. You can add that to your answer. So we talk about that. So in terms of multiple intelligence theory, what intelligence, intelligences were activated? Inter, when you're talking, and intra, when you're thinking and sitting. What else? Verbal because, writing the answer down, very good. Anything else? Not really, no visual, no kinesthetic. Logical, you can say logical, you know, you're not really solving a problem, but you're definitely using some critical thinking, okay? You're analyzing the situation. So, you know, these things are important. Um, let's see what this looks like here. This is a, a video of um, a high school class doing the same thing. By the way, if you, you, if you YouTube search term number heads together, thousands of videos will come up. Okay, here's your question. Think time. What intelligence is being activated right here? Think time. What intelligence? Intrapersonal.
Write your answers. What intelligence? Verbal. So this teacher just touched on five intelligences, just engaged or activated five intelligences. Obviously, she's got a little technology here she's working with, and that's what she does. All right. We're going to do a few more activities. One's going to be a Kahoot. One is going to be um, find someone who. So I'm going to ask you a question. I'll let you guys decide. Um, this is a, a tough room to do find someone who, but I still need to do it. You will be asked to get up and walk around, which probably will give you a little more energy. But you just had a bathroom break, so I thought maybe we'd do a Kahoot and do that from the comfort of your own seat. Do you have a preference? All right. Some of you already know what Kahoot is, okay? Who in here has administered a Kahoot? In other words, you've been a teacher? Okay. All right. So about half of you, the other half has not. So it's, right? So eventually, I'm probably going to stop doing this because I'll probably get into these rooms and everybody will have done it. But because I still get into groups that have not done it, it's important for those of you who have not seen it to see it and to see how engaged people are. It's a wonderful tool, and we're going to do it together. So what I'm going to do is log in. I've created a special Kahoot just for this group. This is free. Right now it's trying to get me to sign up for a paid version. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do player versus player. And you're gonna have to get your phones out. Okay. You do not have to have the app. What you're going to do is you're going to go to kahoot.it. Let me uh, mute this. I'll put that back on in a second. You're going to go to kahoot.it. K A H O O T dot I T. You're going to click on join game and you're going to enter in that game code and you're going to put your name. There you go. Simple and easy. Enter in the game code, your names will start popping up on the screen. Very good, it's very simple. Kahoot.it. Yep. Now let me know when this, um, if you're not able to get on. Enter your name. 
Yeah, and your name. Just put your name in there. Nickname's fine. Man. So I think I'm, I'm pretty sure the free version I'm capped at 50. I, I, I don't do this with large groups like this too often. I don't know, I'm going up above it. Cool. And it's free? They have it free? So it's going up. That's great. That's great. Hey, this will be this will be fun for you guys. I trust me. It's not going to be boring. I have stuff that's very related to this state. Right. I'm gonna go ahead and start this when we get to 60. All right. So let's so so let's I'll go ahead and answer these some of these questions now. Who <laughs> you do not have to have the app as a student. You guys are students right now. You don't have to have the app. You just go ahead and log in using kahuna.it. Um, as a teacher, you have to have an account. The account is free, and it's pretty simple to build. Um, we're not going to get into the, to too much of the um, nuts and bolts. So we've got our players. I'm going to go ahead and start. And so when you, when you see the questions come up here, and again, I know that half of you guys know this already, but some of you guys don't. The questions pop up. You're going to be given 20 seconds to answer it. The answers are going to be shapes and colors in the bottom part of the screen. So you have to look up at the screen to determine what you want to answer. Okay? You have to pick the shape slash color for the answer that you want, and you just hit you answer on your phone. Are you ready? Here we go. First question. How many representatives serve in the U.S. House out of Mississippi? One, two, three, or four? Right now, we'll go to another screen. The next screen is going to tell us who's in the top five. Nick J, knew that right away. Joe, Nessa, and then JCN and Dr. AMT. And this, what you'll see is it's pretty competitive, right? We're going to, you know, I don't have any rewards for you. I, I, we have lunch. Free lunch. All right. Ready, next one? In which year did Mississippi join the union? The first time. 1817, 1832, 1809, or 1860? The answer, 1817. 19 of you got that right. Nick J, who's Nick J? Nick J, he knows his history. He's taking a lead here. Nick Nessel there. Darla, Lisa, and Caput. All right. Next one. True or false? Jimmy Buffett was born in Mississippi. True or false? False is red. True is blue. Who is Jimmy Buffett? <laughs> I'm not a big fan of Jimmy Buffett myself. The answer is true. Jimmy Buffett is not. A lot of people think he was born in Key West, like in Florida. But he was born in Mississippi. Let's see. Ooh, Nick J. He didn't know that one. Lisa's up. Caput, also up there. Next one. The blank Mississippi All Stars is a band formed by the Dickinson brothers. Is it the North, South, East, or West? What's the name of the band? The North Mississippi All-Stars, South Mississippi All-Stars, East or West? Does anybody know that band? 
They're awesome. That's a great band. It is a North Mississippi All-Star. I've seen them play quite a few times. Caput is now up there. Then D. Lawrence. All right, ready? Next one. True or false? An auditory learner is part of multiple in intelligence theory. True or false? An auditory learner, if you don't get this right. <laughs> false is red, true is blue. Oh, come on! <laughs> Multiple intelligence theory, there's nothing, there's nothing, there's no such thing as auditory intelligence. Okay? I'm hoping that you thought that true was red was the red one. Musical rhythmic is intelligence. There's nothing called auditory intelligence. Musical rhythmic, think about this. They, you, auditory is hearing. Auditory is hearing. Musical rhythmic, you can be creating your own lyrics to a beat. So it's not really auditory, it's, it's musical rhythmic. You can think of auditory as part of it, but there's no such thing as auditory intelligence. Like, think about this. This is a good question. Ward asked a question here. Back in the day, before 1983, and before the 90s really, because multiple intelligence theory took a while to get accepted by the educational community, people thought of people learning, or educators thought of as a VAK method, visual, auditory, kinesthetic, and then tactile as well. Multiple intelligence theory expands that and sort of puts that all to the side. So there's no such thing as auditory intelligence. Music learning that could incorporate that, but it's also being able to put something to a beat. Right? Put something to a song, which is you're creating with words. Okay? Good, good. We'll have another one in there too, probably thrown in. A visual learner, true or false, is part of multiple intelligence theory. Is there something called visual intelligence? True or false? So yes, so here, right, to be a visual spatial intelligence, if you look at multiple intelligence theory, you look at all those names of, of, the, the, of the intelligences, there is something called visual slash spatial intelligence. D. Lawrence is running away with this thing. Let's see if we can get some of these people back. Next up, Mississippi was the blank state to join the union. First, second, third, was it that we have? Eight, 20th, 15th, or 23rd? Eight. 20th, 15th, or 23rd? So the answer is 20th. It definitely wasn't the 8th, right? Because that's all the northeast area, right? On the east side. It took a while for westward expansion, so it was the 20th. Maybe I don't know. D. Lawrence, H. Leal, Samantha. Next up, we got three more. True or false, Mississippi was the second state to secede from the Union. True or false, Mississippi was the second state to secede from the Union. D. Lawrence, oh my, who's D. Lawrence? <laughs> you know your history. <laughs> in regards to air and water quality, Mississippi ranks in the top five of the U.S. states, true or false? In regards to air and water quality, Mississippi ranks in the top five. Something positive here. 
<laughs> Look, I'm just going to Atlanta. Look, I'm just going to Atlanta. We're going to share like rankings later. D. Lawrence, you're on fire. Last one. Kahoot allows students to engage with instruction in an enthusiastic and motivational way. Strongly agree, agree, neutral, or disagree. Strongly use red, agree is blue, yellow, neutral, green is disagree. So, <laughs> I just came out and I had to choose an answer. I'm glad, I'm glad that we have, you know, 57 of you that chose to strongly agree or agree. Um, for those of you who disagree, you know, I'm not really sure why, but, but it, I've used this before with my students. I will continue. I don't use it in every single class, but I definitely bring it out in certain classes, um, especially my English 101. I can share with you what I do in there, but it's a pretty good little tool. Um, obviously, D. Lawrence wins that one. And uh, Samantha and Caput came in um, second and third. Uh, I want to show you, for those of you who have never seen this before, you can get results. So you can use these results for your informal assessment. I'm going to go ahead and download it and see, just to show you what it looks like. And here they come. It's a nice Excel spreadsheet. So you can see both question by question and, and whole, the whole thing, how they're doing. And here we go. So again, for those of you who have never used it before, it gives you a nice snapshot, overview, final scores, the question summary here, how they're doing on each question. They break it down by question and so forth. So you can kind of get an idea of how your students are doing. Okay. So for those of you who have not used Kahoot, what sort of questions do you have? So the website is Get Kahoot. G-E-T-K-A-H-O-O-T. Yes, sir? I've tried to use it, but I find it's limited on the, on the verbiage, the, the question size and answers. Yes. So for those of you who don't use this, the people who do use it can explain to you. You only have a certain amount of characters to, to use for questions. It's kind of like Twitter, right? Um, you only have a certain amount of characters for the answers. So you have to learn, if you have these long questions, you'd have to shorten them. Okay? You can put pictures in, as you saw, like, you know, identify what this is. So if you teach aircraft, if you have a certain tool you think they should know just by looking at it, what is this used for? Or what is this tool called? You know, there's a lot that you can do. Um, other questions you have, for those of you who have not used it. So with each game that you play, it just makes a new pin. So you'll you'll you have your you have your games right. Let me go ahead and go to mine. So here are my cahoots. So here's my English 101 slash uh, dash 012. Um, I'm not going to play this with you, but I'll just show you what it looks like. So I give my students out um, a paper, okay? And I write, I, the first one is true or false, the topic sentence is effective. And they have to answer that. The topic sentence is not effective because, and they have, a, they have a choice of answers. Third, why are there no quotes used in the first citation? So they, they're looking at something that I give them and they have to analyze it and then answer. This brief, this is a brief, little, you wanna call it a quiz or a game, whatever you wanna do. But then I get some feedback from them right away, and it gets them involved with their device. And again, it goes back to involving in everybody. You, you guys want, talked about engagement and technology. Kahoot does that. Okay. Um, each game or each Kahoot, they call them Kahoots I have, are all included in my little library here. Okay. So some of the Kahoots I use are for training. 
Some of them are used for my classes. So persuasive message analysis. I give my students a persuasive message. They then have that in front of them, and then I go to Kahoot, and I'm like, okay, let's go through this together. And so here are the 10 questions I have here. Why is the writer credible? So my students, will, and you can play with the, the number of seconds. You guys had 20 seconds to answer the question. For this one, I think I said it at 40 seconds. So you can change the amount of time that they have to answer the question, okay? Um, the writer uses a common ground statement in, right? True or false, the writer uses direct approach. So each of these games are used in conjunction with the learning outcomes or curriculum of a course. This one right here, this one is, is one I'll, I'll just my last one I'd like to show off to you. I give my students their instructional package and their instructor addendum. This is what we all do the first day, right? We go over our, our policies and procedures. Okay, guys, you give, you've got five minutes to read it over. Let's take a Kahoot. Take out your phones. Here are the questions. How are you able to contact your professor? What is your professor's cell number? How many classes can you miss before you might be withdrawn? True or false, you're required to use a tutor at least once this semester. So right then and there, I can go over my syllabus with all my policies and determine, are they getting this or not? Any? Once you build one, it's there forever. You make it private or public. Now let me shit, you bring it up public. There are other cahoots out there that are public. For those of you who teach in, in popular classes, like there's nursing classes in every single community college in America, it seems like, right? There's probably cahoots on there for, on COPD. However, do not play those unless you preview them. Because you don't know if the answers are right. So we can do a search. I can do a search right now um, on welding. Okay. Yeah, you know already. Yeah. Oh Lord. I don't. I don't use other cahoots. This is discovered. Thanks. Yeah. So there's probably thousands. Yeah, 15,000. Let's do COPD. 20,000. So, I mean, you know, there might be a good out there you like a lot. You don't have to do any work. You just kind of get it, and there it is. Do, do what? Robotics? You teach robotics? Robotic surgery? I don't know, That's, that could be a tough one. Robotics. Wow. Yeah. You're great. Right. Any other questions? Okay, real easy to sign up. You know, just simple, like to sign up for any other account. Um, that's it. There are other tools if we have time, I'll share with you. Let's do something else. Um, I'm gonna do something old school, um, which is the index card. So a lot of my, well, all of my students, when they think of, of me, they probably think of, oh yeah, the guy with the index cards. Because I use index cards throughout the semester more than just a few times. And these are like, you know, a buck. And Walmart get a bunch. And so I'll, I'll hand these out. And what I like to do is just uh, make sure you just, can you hand those down? Just, everybody gets one. Okay? And I use the next cards for a, a variety of different <coughs> reasons. Okay? And then if you need any more, let me know. If there are extras, I'll take the extras.
They coming down? Yeah. Got it. Good. good. Very good. I'll take an extra. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. All right. Here is your responsibility. Go to the survey, which is located on pages two through five, or two through four. Go to the survey, and I want you to write down, like search for any statement that you put a three next to. Search for any statement that you put a three next to, and then write down that statement on your index card. So all you're doing is writing down one statement that you put a three next to on the index card. Oh, okay. um, so here's what you're doing. Everybody write down a statement, right? <coughs> this is called find someone who. You wrote down your statement. Jeffrey wrote down, I like working with my hands at concrete activities such as sewing, weaving, carving, carpentry, or model building. What he is responsible for doing is finding someone else in the room who also scored a three. He does not have to find someone who's, who wrote down the same thing. He's got to find someone in this room that also scored a three on that statement. Again, you're not looking for a match to someone else who scored a three. You're going to then write down the name of that person and the proof or evidence provided to you. So Jeffrey might find, I, I, that's not me, I really don't you know, work my hands that much, um, but let's say you, know, you do, right? Let's say you scored a three, and so he would say, oh, my name's James, and I build, um, I build antiques. You do? I work on, you restore antique cars? So I, that's it, so he put down James restores antique cars on a regular basis. That's what you're doing. Name and evidence. So because this room is kind of not really conducive to walking around, if you want to just kind of search around you, you can. If you can't find someone, then I'm going to ask you to find someone by walking around, okay? So let's talk about this. Um, first things first, let's talk process. Let's talk about the intelligences. <coughs> Kinesthetic. Kinesthetic intelligence. Was it or was it not engaged? Yeah. Yes, or activated, right? I activated it, allowed you to engage with it. Interpersonal. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Intrapersonal, yeah. right? When you're thinking to yourselves about what you're gonna use. Logical. Yeah, maybe. Verbal. Yeah. Yes, because yeah. you're talking and you're writing down. Not musical rhythmic, not really visual. Because I didn't have you guys draw anything. Okay, writing is different than drawing. So five of the intelligences were activated. Now, I could have done this, and typically I do this right after you do the survey, right? So think about if you're in grad school, or you're, or you're an undergrad, and you're learning about education, you want to be a teacher. No matter, anybody in here take education classes? Okay, did you learn about multiple intelligence theory? Okay. What could you do, what could a professor do in terms of teaching multiple intelligence theory? What, what's a really easy thing for an instructor, for a professor to do that would be traditional teaching? Lecture. PowerPoint. And in fact, if I Google, and I've done this before, Multiple intelligence theory PowerPoint, thousands and thousands and thousands will pop up. And more than likely, they've been used by professors that teach multiple intelligence theory PowerPoint in the students' lecture, right? The students take notes. Doesn't have to be that way. Could be that you power, use PowerPoint or you lecture for maybe 10, 50 minutes, or you just start with this. Have them write down some statements and you get into it. And now that the, the you teach and you're like, okay, and this will be me kind of getting into it, just an example. Who wrote down something on their card from the body kinesthetic intelligence? Who wrote it down? Okay, great. What did you write down? Um, I need to practice a new skill rather than reading about it or watching a video. Okay. Who did you find? Uh, Jamisha right here. 
Jamisha, okay. And what, what did Jamisha tell you? What was the example that she gave to you? Well, she's a dental assistant, so how she learns her job is by doing it instead of just social media. You always felt as a student that you would much rather work on someone to get the gist of what you're doing, right? And that's body kinesthetic, right? That's actual movement. That's how I'm teaching this, right? That's how I'm teaching how, what that means in the terms of learning process. Let's do one more. Who wrote down something from uh, intrapersonal? Intra. You wrote down something from intra. What'd you write down? I consider myself strong-willed and independent-minded. Who'd you find? Okay. And what was the evidence that she gave you? She was what? In a household with five men. Okay. So you're very independent. Do you find yourself like needing time away from those guys? No? No. Okay. That's good. I'm assuming it's your husband and your kids. Okay. How do you rule with an iron fist? trying to think of how that would work with learning. <laughs> um, all right, so you like you like things on your own terms in a certain sense? Uh, yes. Okay. How do you deal with those two? <laughs> you guys know each other? Um, let me another one from, let's say interpersonal. Interpersonal. Who wrote down something from interpersonal? You did. What would you write down? Um, able to respond to set back. Oh, that's intra. Intra. That's fine. Who'd you find? Huh? Who, well, let's go to inter. Anybody write down something interpersonal, where it's with other people? None of you wrote down anything interpersonal? You did. Thank you very much for playing. What would you write down? <laughs> interpersonal. I'm the sort of person that people come to advice. Who'd you find? Lisa. What was the example she gave you? Um, uh, of course, she's her student. What, what coworkers come to you for advice? Um, she's a, an assistant um, who speaks like the same word and things for all the departments. Do you enjoy that? Mm -hmm. Right. So people who enjoy doling out advice or helping other people, they, they're going to want to you know, kind of get involved in class with other people because they that's how they want to engage in material. So here I am using this little activity to get people engaged, right? to get people into, um, and I don't mean engaged in terms of talking with others. Engaged meaning approaching a new concept in a way that they are involved with the concept, whether it's alone or moving or trying to figure out a problem. So I want to share a video with you. This is uh, my Twitter feed. Um, this is from last summer. It's a very small intro to lit class. And so what I've given them is a poem to read and questions. Each of them has an index card with a different question. The index card could be, what is the physical state of the speaker? How does the speaker feel about the condition? Uh, why is there an exclamation point at the end of line four? It's a poem. First day of class. If the person we're talking to doesn't know how to do it, can't do it, then, then get up and find someone else, okay?
But you have the title of the poem, too, right? Metaphors. So, metaphor, metaphor. What is a metaphor? So, first day, here's a poem. Let's think about what you th let's think about your thoughts. Try to break down the meaning of the poem and talk to other people. I don't want to go up there and say, this is what the poem is and give them the answers. Let's have you guys dive in and then we'll come back and we'll, we'll go over the answers. And that's what we did. So you can see how that might work, all right? Find someone who you can do with any concept. Teaching aviation maintenance, they come in, Maybe you did a lab practical or something, where, and, and now you say, okay, find someone who can explain the process of you know, fuel metering. How do you, how do, you, how do, you do that? Uh, and then break it, you know, that's a pretty big, that's a class, right? Fuel metering is a whole class. It could be questions on that. And you make them talk to one another, figure out what the answer might be. They might not get the answers, that's okay. You want them engaged. 